Today's session will be divided into three main parts. First of all, we look into some theory behind the construction stage analysis. Then we'll do a live demonstration following with a Q&A session for the remaining time. So, why is construction stage analysis important? First of all, critical forces or uh, effects can occur in any temporary structure along the construction process. It is also important to take into account time-dependent effects and maybe most importantly, the safest and the most economical construction process has to be considered. Now let's look into some differences between a conversion analysis and a construction stage analysis. A, a conversion analysis is run under the assumption that all the loads are simultaneously added to a completed structure. Whereas we know that in reality, a construction process is sequential and loads are added to the structure as segments are being constructed. If we look at it from a finite element analysis point of view, we can see that in a conventional analysis, all the elements of the structure are active from the beginning and all the loads are active as well. Whereas if we conduct a construction stage analysis, we can see that in stage one, we can activate the first part of the structure with its loadings in the second stage, the second span, and at this first stage, the third span. When we look at the results, it is clear that with a construction stage analysis, some critical effects may occur actually in elements that have not been outlined in the conventional analysis. This is very important and has to be considered in the design. Now let's see how we tackle construction stage analysis in MIDAS Civil. There are two main parts to be considered. Firstly, time-dependent material properties. These are accounted for defining creep shrinkage properties or compressive strength gain and also tendon relaxation. And the second part is the definition of the stages and the actual sequences by using members, loads, and boundary conditions. Now let's see how the procedure is actually done. First, we have to define the structural model then define the time-dependent material properties and assign them to the base materials, following by the definition of the stages and the actual sequences, and then any analysis options that we want to consider for such analysis have to be set, and the analysis can be run. Now let's look a bit into time-dependent material properties. As we all know, many factors can affect creep and shrinkage. These factors may be water cement ratio, the age or strength of the concrete, ambient temperature or humidity, exposure classes, the aggregates, moisture content. Most of this can be considered in Midas Civil. And you can see on your screens now just how simple the definition is. The definition can be done for both creep and shrinkage and the strength gain, either by choosing one of the design codes available or manually defining the properties. Now let's see how we can define the stages themselves. The basic concept of construction stage definition in Minda Civil is based on group activation or deactivation. All structure loads or boundary groups can be activated or deactivated at any stage during the construction stages and the sequencing. You can see on your top left corner, the list of stages this can, these can be automatically generated or they can be added in manually. In the stage definition, we can choose a name, a duration of the stage, any additional steps that we want to consider in the stages, whether to save the results for the stage or for any additional steps, and which elements, boundaries, or loads to be activated or deactivated in the given stage. In addition to this, as maybe nowadays 90% of bridges are composite bridges, we have added a function that allows us to define one finite element with two different properties, considering the pre-composite properties of the section and the composite properties of the section. These are easy to follow and we can choose uh, in which stage any of the properties to be considered. In the construction stage analysis control data, we can choose options regarding our analysis if we want to take into account nonlinearity, p-delta effect, if we want or not to consider time-dependent effects, 
and many other options regarding initial forces or things such as tendons. Now let's look a bit into construction stage results. Construction stage results are separated in order to be easier to read and we can read results for dead loads, erection loads and also results coming from pre-stress, creep shrinkage both in their primary and secondary effects. All of these can be read together under summation in order to have the result from the total effect on the elements. We can see here an example. You can see how dead load plus pre-stress plus creep and shrinkage effects can be added to get the total effect on the members reading summation. Also results can be read for specific things such as the tandem pre-stress losses. In table format, we can read losses as immediate losses, losses due to creep, relaxation. Also, these losses can be shown in a graph format. Specific results can be also read for composite sections, and we can see that for each of the parts, results can be read differently, and each of the parts has specific points where stresses can be read or forces. Now let's look into a live demonstration. I'm going to model a two-span bridge with 22 meters of each span representing six Y4 girders spaced at 1.5 meters for each span. Our first construction stage represents the activation of the substructure together with the self-weight and the boundary conditions for the substructure. In the second construction stage, the precast beams are added and a temporary support condition is considered so that the beams can be considered as simply supported. In addition, the wet concrete load and the pre-stress are activated. In the, sec in the third construction stage, this being our long-term stage, we activate the slab part of the composite sections together with the transverse elements representing for the grillage. And also we change the boundary conditions of the beams to now fully restrained, deactivate the wet concrete load and activate the superimposed dead load. I have here an, an initial model where I have defined my materials, my sections and my tendon properties we can check one material. You can see concrete has been chosen from one of the standards and the material found in the database. The sections, the Y4 section that we are using, which can be added to a composite section. We can see the beam part and the slab part and the tandem properties. We can define here what type of tendon we want to consider, the material, the tendon area, strand diameter, if we want to consider relaxation and considering what code, ultimate strength, yield strength. In addition, I have defined all my groups. As I've mentioned, we have structure groups, boundary groups, or load groups. I have defined structure groups for the girders, for the deck part, and for the substructure, and boundary groups for the superstructure, substructure, temporary supports condition, and the links, and also load groups. We can start by firstly creating one of the girders. I'm going to use one of our base wizards. We have two spans of 22 meters, so we will use 44 elements of one meter length with the girder material and the girder section. And you can see the composite section has been added. I'm going to work mainly in wireframe mode because this allows me an easier modeling. And now we just have to copy this beam five times in the transverse direction. We can simply translate these elements. We copied them along Y at a distance of 1.5 meters, five times. 
and we can see now that the girders have been added. And now we need to add the transverse elements for the grillage. We can do that by extruding these nodes and we can choose the transverse material and the transverse section and extrude these nodes minus 1.5 meters as we are going in the negative side of Y five times. We click apply and we see that the grillage has been created. Now we are going to again translate some nodes in order to create the substructure. I'm going to use the translate function for the nodes and I'm going to extrude these nodes and the ones representing the middle of the bridge. You can see all these nodes have been selected and I can copy them along Z, firstly at one minus 1.2 meters. This represents nodes at the bottom fiber of the beams and again at 0.2 meters and these nodes will be used for the supports. We can see the nodes have been added and now we can create the piers for the bridge. Again, I'm, go I'm going to extrude two of the nodes. Simply choose extrude, add the substructure material and the pier section along Z at minus one meters five times. And now the piers have been added. Now I'm going to create the pier cap. Again, I just create, I can create the element, choose the substructure material and the pier cap section. Simply connect these two nodes and the modeling of the bridge has been done. Now that we have the geometry, we can add the time dependent material properties. Firstly, I'm going, I'm going to define the creep and shrinkage properties. Let's do it for the substructure first. I can choose the European formulation and the strength of the concrete is 40 megapascals, so 40,000 kilonewtons per square meter. And we are going to use an arbitrary value for the notional size as we have a function that can automatically calculate all the notional sizes for all of the members. If we want, we can check the results in, in graphic format, either for the creep coefficient or the shrinkage strain. I simply click apply and the property has been added. Now I can add the properties for the girder. Again, European, this is C5060, so 50 megapascals. And the properties of the slab, this is 25,000. And now I can add the increase in strength. Again, I can choose the European formulation. First is the substructure. This is FCK plus Delta F, which means that I need 40,000 kilonewtons per square meter. And again, I can see this in a graphic format. I can add it again for the girder, choose the European formulation again, 58,000 and click OK and add the slab part as well. Again, the European formulation, 33 megapascals. And now, as I've mentioned before, I can calculate the notional size automatically. I simply select the function of calculating the notional size of the member, select all the members and click apply. And now I can check in the table format. You can see the values of the notional size for all the elements have been calculated. Now we are just left to link the time dependent material properties to the base materials. I can choose the creep shrinkage properties for the substructure together with the compressive strength gain and link them to the substructure material. Add, add in the girder and the slab. 
and the properties have been added. We can check them also in the tree menu. Now that we have defined all the material properties, we can add in we can uh, add in all the elements of the geometry to the structure groups. Firstly, I will concentrate only on half of the bridge in order to make the assigning easier. I'm activating just one half and just the girders. And now I can simply select my first girder, drag and drop the structure group, and it has been added to the group. Do the same for the second girder, the third one, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. And we can do the same for the other half of the bridge. And now I can add the first girder, the second girder, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. Now if we activate everything and double click on any structure group, we can see which elements are part of any given group. Now we can add the elements of the substructure as well. And the transverse elements in the deck structure group. Again, we can highlight any of them to make sure that the proper elements are added to the proper groups. Now that we have the geometry defined, time-dependent material properties, we can start adding some boundary conditions. First, we'll add the boundary conditions for the substructure. We can add the support, select the nodes, choose the appropriate boundary group, substructure, and choose which degrees of freedom to be limited. We can see here that the properties have been added. Now let's add the supports for the substructure. This time choose for the superstructure, sorry. This time choose the superstructure load group, boundary group, click apply, and they have been added. And the temporary condition where we take into account the fact that the precast beams are simply supported in the second construction stage. So we are releasing DX and we are going to add another condition a little a little bit later. Again, make sure we are in the temporary boundary group. Click apply. Now, if we click on any of the boundary groups, the nodes that are part of them will be highlighted. Now, let's add the moment releases at the ends of the beams in order to make sure that the beams are simply supported. We can do that by adding beam end releases. I'm going to select each end of the beams. Again, make sure that the boundary group is the appropriate one, temporary in this case. And I'm going to release MY. If we look from perspective view, we can see that beam end releases have been added to these ends. And I can do the same for the other ends. Again, this time, select the J node, make sure that the appropriate boundary group is chosen, and click Apply. Now, I'm going to add the links connecting the superstructure to the substructure. First, I'm going to connect the nodes representing the beams with the nodes for the bottom fibers. I'm going to use a rigid link in the links boundary group. My master node will be the node of the girder and we are going to assign a rigid body behavior and copy this link along Y five times at 1.5 meters. 
and select the slave node. Click apply and the links have been added. I can do the same for the middle of the bridge. Choose the appropriate master node, click apply. And for the other end, choose the master node and the slave node and click apply. Now I'm going to connect the beams to the actual support conditions using an elastic link. This spacing and the fact that we use a different row to add the support conditions is added because generally when we have bearings, these have different rigidities assigned to them. But today, in order to keep the modeling simple, I am simply going to use a rigid behavior, assign it to the links boundary group. Again, I can copy this link five times at 1.5 meters and connect the two nodes. Make sure the appropriate boundary group is chosen and the links have been added. And I can do the same for the other end of the bridge. Now again, I can check which nodes are in which boundary groups. Now I can also add the tendons in my, in my girders. I can do that by using the tendon template. This is where structure groups become very handy. I can simply select one of the girders. As you can see, the girder has been selected. As this is an automated function, I can auto-generate it. The software will know what type of section it is, or I can choose one from the database. As you can see, UK Y beams, Y4. I can click OK, and the general layout has been added. I can select to delete any of these tendons if I want, or I can choose to have the bonding where it is the case. I'm just going to keep it this way for now. Click apply and the tendons have been added. I can see it in the works tree as well. Now I can simply select the second girder, click apply, the third one, click apply, the fourth one, apply, the fifth, the sixth, and now we move to the second span. Again, apply, apply, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth, and the sixth. Now that I have everything defined regarding the geometry and the materials, also my support conditions, I can move on to adding loads. Let's add some load cases first. We'll add the self-weight, defined as dead load, then the wet concrete, and the superimposed dead load, and also the pre-stress. This will be a pre-stress type. Now let's start adding some loads. I can add the self-weight, choose the load case in which the self-weight to be added, and the load group. I'm going to choose to have the self-weight acting in the negative direction of the global Z. Now I can add the wet concrete load, choose the wet concrete load case, and the wet concrete load group choose the element on which I want to add the load and simply add the knob, minus 7.5 kilonewtons per meter. Click apply. And now I can also add the superimposed dead load. This will be added on our transverse elements and this time 2.5 kilonewtons per meter. Click apply. 
And we can also add the pre-stress load, simply adding, choosing the load case in which to be considered, and the load group, the tendons, and the value of the stress. I can also choose from where the load to be added, in this case, as this is pre-stressed, both ends. Make sure the correct load cases and load groups are added, are selected, and add the load. Now we can see that the loads have been added. Now that I have everything defined, all geometry, boundary conditions, and loads, we can start defining our construction stages. I'm going to generate all three construction stages. Construction stage from one to three, choose to save the results for the stage and click apply. And now we can modify each of the stage, each of the stages. The first stage will last for 25 days. And in this stage, as I've mentioned, we will activate the substructure at an age of three days together with the boundary conditions for the substructure and the self-weight load. Click Apply. The second stage will last for 10 days. And in this stage, we will activate the main girders. These are precast, so they will have an age of 28 days in order to consider the modulus of elasticity as for 28 days. And the boundary conditions to be considered are those to be added are those for the links connecting the superstructure to the substructure and, as I've mentioned, the temporary support condition. And the loads to be added are the wet concrete load and the pre-stress. The third stage, which is our long-term stage, let's assign 10,000 days to it. The deck elements representing the transverse elements will be activated. 10 days have passed in the second construction stage. So now when we activate the grillage, these elements will have 10 days of age. I can also add the boundaries, remove the temporary support conditions and activate the supports for the superstructure and also remove the wet concrete load and add the superimposed dead load and click OK. And as I've mentioned, we can also consider the composite action and pre-composite action. So for our girder, I can choose to have my girder part, the first part representing the girder, active in the second construction stage at an age of 28 days. And the slab material for the second part activated in the third stage at an age of 10 days. Click OK. And now we can and now we can check that the sequencing is correct. If we go in the first construction stage, we can see that only the self-weight load is activated and the supports for the substructure, no tendons yet and no other loadings. The second stage, we can see that the girders are activated, but only but only in the precomposite with the precomposite properties. Also, I can see the links have been activated and the beam end releases for the simply supported condition. The, the wet concrete load is active as well. And also the pre-stress load together with the tendons. If we move to the third construction stage, we can see the beam end releases are removed and wet concrete load is removed and the activation of the superimposed dead load.
we can see now that the composite action is considered. And this is the entire modeling process. In order to save time, I'm going to show you the results from an already analyzed model. So we can see here, I have the same model already analyzed, and we can check the results for it. Let's start with some reactions. We can have the values displayed. We can see the reactions for the substructure. If we move to the second stage, again, the reactions coming from the added elements and the reactions for the third stage. We can also check deformations. Let's see the deformations caused by the pre-stress. We don't need the values. And if we want, we can have a legend, a legend. Obviously, this can be improved. And we can also check forces. We can check them for any of the effects we desire. Let's see the dead load, bending moment, about the major axis coming from dead load. We can see no, no negative moments in the main girders in the second construction stage. As I've mentioned, this is considered as simply supported in the second stage. And if we move to the third stage, we can see that from the dead load alone, negative bending moments arise. We can also check results from other effects, say tendons, the pre-stress. We can check the creep, also shrinkage, and also a summation of all the results. In addition to this, we can check results for tendons. We can check tendon losses in graphic format for any of the tendons. Or if we want, and it is easier, we can check it in table format for any of the strands at any construction stage that they are active. We can see the immediate losses, losses due to elastic deformation, losses due to creep, shrinkage, relaxation. And we can also check results specific for composite sections. Say we want we are interested in just the first 10 elements, the results coming from dead load in the third construction stage at one of the ends of the elements. And we can see here results for the first part, this time the girder, and the second part representing the slab. This is the entire modeling process and how we can read results. And as you can see, this is easy enough, but there is even an easier way we can use. I have here again, an initial model where I have some materials defined and some sections and the properties of the tendons. And we can use one of our uh, wizards called the Pre-Stress Composite Bridge Wizard. Here, where we have many bridges that are very similar and just few changes have to be done to them, we can save this wizard file and and open it anytime we want and just to make the modifications that we need. This time I'm going to open a wizard file for the bridge that I have just created. Again, this wizard is uh, sectioned in different sections. In the layout, we can define the general layout of the bridge, two spans of 22 meters, 15 meters the width, 
and we can choose whether we want to not or not to have the substructure modeled and information about the substructure. Along the way, we can find guides for everything. As you can see, and in the second tab, we can add information about our sections, what materials to be used for the sections, how many girders, if we want or not diaphragms, what section to be considered for the girders, and information about the transfer deck elements, the tendon definition for the beam, any additional loadings, if we want to consider self-weight, wet concrete load, loads coming from formwork, barrier, median strip, wearing surfaces. We can also define the moving load with this wizard. And the last tab, which includes the construction stages, we can see how, what each construction stage represents, and we can alter the duration of each of the stages. And if we want, we can also add in reinforcement. And now simply click on OK. We can see how the model is created. A job that may take one day, now with this wizard can be done very fast, maybe half an hour, one hour. You can see the entire geometry is created and each of the stages with the sequences and the loads to be considered. First stage, second stage, I activate just the girders and the diaphragms with the loadings. Third stage, add in wet concrete load. Third stage, we take into account the composite action. Fourth stage, add barrier load, median strip, wearing surface loads. And the fifth stage, the long-term stage. Now, this is the live demonstration.